so if you have watched the videos of distance and displacement as expected and for speed and velocity as well the next step is obviously acceleration and acceleration is actually in very simple words you can actually define it first and then let's talk about it uh, with some examples as well but to define acceleration it's very very simple it's just rate of change of velocity and we have seen this phrase somewhere else rate of change we have already seen this but let's focus on what is changing here what is changing it's the velocity where is changing so how can velocity actually change uh, well it can change in three different ways let's assume a trolley which is traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second and sometime later you find the same trolley traveling at a speed of 40 meters per second or I must say a velocity of 40 meters per second in the same direction so what has happened to the velocity of the trolley well the magnitude has increased velocities magnitude has increased but that's not the only way things can accelerate the same trolley which was traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second can be traveling let's say in the same direction at a speed of 20 meters per second what has happened to the velocity now well the velocity's magnitude has decreased nothing has happened to its direction yet but we all know since velocity is a vector its direction can change as well so let's assume the same example the velocity the trolley was initially 30 meters per second and sometime later you find the trolley traveling in a different direction at the same speed of 30 meters per second so what has happened here velocities direction has changed however nothing has happened to the magnitude so when things change direction even then we consider them to be accelerating since what is acceleration acceleration is rate of change of velocity so any kind of change that occurs to velocity means that acceleration is taking place <clears throat> all right then both things together can happen as well again looking at the same example the same trolley traveling at 30 meters per second sometime later is traveling in a different direction but also with a different speed let's say it has changed direction but also changed uh, the magnitude so we can say velocities magnitude and direction both have changed so all these above situations are basically examples of acceleration now since it's just not about uh, calculating the change of velocity but the rate of change so the rate of change is actually just dividing the change of velocity with time and for that we can simply do two uh, examples and with the help of those examples we can understand what is actually acceleration uh, by the way before we go to acceleration I need to inform you that in this case in the second case where the magnitude of velocity decreased initially it was 30 and then it became 20 this is also known as deceleration 
when velocity decreases you can call that acceleration deceleration so coming back to the uh, coming to the first example now it says a car starts to travel <clears throat> at rest the car at rest starts to travel in a straight line so initially the car was at rest what does that mean it means that the initial speed of the car was zero and then it is traveling along a straight path it's not changing direction it reaches a velocity of 12 in 4 seconds what is the acceleration assuming that it is accelerating uniformly well let's understand how to find the acceleration here so it's just change in velocity of the car you, if you look the in the final velocity of the car is 12 and the initial velocity of the car is 0 so 12 minus 0 is the change in velocity of the car and how long does it take for the car to make this change it takes 0 to 4 seconds so 4 seconds is the time it takes to change the velocity that will be 12 over 4 which will be 3 meters per second squared and how did I get the units for this particular quantity well the units of velocity are meters per second and the units of time are seconds that basically gives me meters per second squared now then let's move on to the next example which is pretty similar and it says to us that the velocity of a golf ball rolling in a straight line changes from 8 to 2 meters per second in 10 seconds what is the deceleration well you can see that the initial speed is 8 and the final speed is 2 so it has decreased the velocity has decreased over 10 seconds which basically means deceleration is taking place and as we'll see deceleration is actually negative acceleration uh, so we'll just use the same formula here and as always when you find the change of any quantity is always the final quantity so the final velocity minus initial velocity upon the time it took to change so that would be minus 6 over 10 and that gives us minus 0 0.6 meters per second squared what is the negative sign telling me it's telling me that the velocity is actually decreasing and negative also tells us one thing and another thing velocity acceleration just like velocity is also a vector quantity so you can also be asked to say what is the direction of acceleration for this golf ball and that direction is going to be in the negative direction now remember when you are solving this question you're always always assuming a sign convention for us the sign convention was that anything that is moving any vector which is moving to the right or it has a direction towards the right is a positive vector so we took this as positive value 8 as the positive value and we took 2 as the positive value as well since the acceleration turned out to be negative we can say that the direction of acceleration is actually towards the left and you have to understand that whenever the acceleration is opposite to the movement of an object it is always going to slow the object down it is going to decelerate that's what the negative sign actually mean here that it is deceleration and that the direction of acceleration is actually the opposite of the velocity of the ball that is why the ball is slowing down so let's also write down the rest of the information about acceleration then it is the rate of change of velocity and we can say the formula for acceleration is change of velocity upon time which we can write it as delta v delta here this triangle actually means change over t and 
Another simpler way to write it is V minus U over T, where V is the final velocity, whereas U is the initial velocity. T is the time and A is the acceleration. Alright then, so since we now have learned the formula for acceleration as well, we should also talk about the units of acceleration. The units of acceleration as we just saw were meters per second squared and again they can be kilometers per hour square they could be I don't know uh, they could be meters per minute square for something which is moving very slow but it's always the distance per time squared uh, usually you will be only calculating the acceleration in these units these are the SI units of acceleration and this is what you will mostly be concerned about now another thing to mention here is uh, what happens if something changes direction how do you calculate the acceleration then uh, well at O levels most of the time you're not uh, or many of the times you're not gonna have to worry about that at this level you wouldn't be asked to calculate accelerations for objects that have changed direction and this formula this formula the one that we have just written here only works when it's the magnitude of the velocity is changing when the direction of velocity is changing then we actually have to draw something called a vector diagram in order to find out the change in velocity and then uh, figure out divided by time to find the acceleration but at this level you wouldn't be required to do that however you should know that change of direction does mean that the thing is accelerating uh, even if the magnitude does not change as we saw in this example the speed was 30 so the magnitude of the velocity has not changed but the direction has changed and we did consider it as an example of acceleration all right then